Hi everyone, I'm Jules, and today we're going to calculate your project's health using the DICE tool. Now, DICE was developed by Harold L. Serkin, Perry Keenan, and Alan Jackson in their white paper, The Hard Side of Change Management. What it is, is a scoring methodology to understand the health of your project. The score shows you a statistic snapshot where your project's at, and if it is in a good path to be successful. It is suggested to calculate your dice score at every important phase of your project so you become aware of how well it is progressing. Now, DICE is of course an abbreviation, and what it stands for essentially is the D stands for duration, which refers to the period of time between project gates or key decision checkpoints. I stands for integrity, which refers to the team's reliability in making the project successful. C is commitment, which is not limited only to the team members, but also to senior management. And E stands for effort, which refers to the amount of time and energy the team members need for the project, in addition to what they already have on hand. Now, each factor is given a number base on its criteria. The numbers are used in this equation, yielding a score. So how do you attribute a number to each of the factors? Now we'll dive into each factor to understand how the number is evaluated. First off, we'll start with duration. Now, as previously mentioned, duration looks into how long the execution of a project takes in terms of time. So the question you are to ask here is, how long will the project take to complete? For longer projects, there are typically gates or milestones. So you're going to be asking yourself, how long is the next major milestone? Now, duration is important because the longer it takes to execute a project, the more likely it is to go off track. Therefore, to improve your score, what you'll want to do is first reduce the time frame between said milestones. Then you'll want to re-engineer the structure of the milestones. To do so, you'll ask yourself, are they occurring regularly? Do they move the project to the next phase? And are stakeholders present and engaged in the process? Now, you can also give duration a number or a point. And in the screen in front of you, you'll be able to see essentially what points are attributed to the different time frames. Now, next, what we'll speak on is integrity. And integrity is important for projects because of all the change management you will need to do preparing the employees for the changes to come. You need to have the right people with the right skill sets to be part of the team and capable of working on the project. Make sure that everyone understands their place in the team as well as their responsibilities. If you yourself require some help in the project manager position, seek it out by getting a mentor or a coach. And doing so will allow for you to project the team with the right skill set. And you'll also be able to answer the question, is everyone capable and available for the project? Now, integrity is important because having the right people make up the team and performing the tasks is an integral whole. It will set up the project for success. Your goal is to improve a process in the right way that will be used by the people that are part of the process. To improve your score, you can begin by ensuring that people have sufficient technical skills. Then you want to be sure that the project leader is capable. And lastly, you want to be sure that everyone understands their respective roles and responsibilities within the project. Now, in evaluating integrity, one point will be dedicated if the project has a capable leader that can motivate the team and is dedicated for more than 50% of their time. Four points will be given if the project leader is a novice or dedicates less than 50% of their time to the project. And two or three points are if you believe that the project leader is somewhere in between the two above thresholds. Now, the third component that we're going to speak on is commitment. And commitment is important when you are planning on making a paradigm shift in the organization and you need top-down buy-in to the project. But the top-down approach alone is not going to make it a success. 
you also require buy-in from management and employees. Basically, all levels of your organization should have at least one promoter helping you out with change management. So when we look at commitment, we have it split into senior management and the team you're going to form. Make sure your team has those people in the right levels to help you throughout the change. You'll want to ask yourself two specific questions. The first being, do you have buy-in of senior management, your sponsor, and your team? And the second question is, are they committed to ensure the change will occur and be part of making it happen? Now, again, commitment is important because top level commitment trickling down to other levels is important for the project to succeed. Commitment of your stakeholders is important during the process planning and execution, but it is essential for implementation. You want your improved process to be adopted within your organization. Now, to improve your commitment score, you can begin with the C1 senior management. And what you're going to want to do is have them demonstrate their commitments to the organization through perhaps a town hall or newsletter, etc. Now, you could also look at the C2 PM and team, which can then you'll have them enhance communications within the team or be able to construct the project's importance to senior management. An example of doing so is a quick hit. Now, to specifically evaluate the commitment of C1 senior management, you're going to give one point if the project needs and goals are clearly articulated. You'll give four points if you see in the team any signs of reluctance. And again, you'll give two or three points if you feel there is a mixed bag of people in your team. On the other hand, evaluating commitment for C2 PM and team, one point is given if the team members are eager to work on the project. Two points are given if the team members are willing to work on the project and three or four points if you feel there is a mixed bag of people in your team. Now, the final component of the DICE model is effort. And effort is important because you need people to spend time on the project properly so it can get done. And in today's world, resources are doing multi jobs or are stretched with other initiatives. So you are competing to get them on your project. Make sure you have a sense of what needs to happen in your project, possibly a schedule with milestones so you can explain to your team how much time as well as when they are required to jump in. Now, you'll also want to ask yourself, does each team member have the project as part of their goals and objectives, standard work or mandate? And you ask yourself, do you have buy-in of senior management, your sponsor and your team? So again, effort is important because just getting someone to say they will be on your team only to see that they don't have the time to do what is required of them becomes an obstacle for your project. Remember, you are competing for the resources to be on your project. Having the right resources, accomplishing the required activities on your project in time allotted is accomplishment in itself. Now, you can improve your effort score by, as a project lead, manage your team resources effectively, transitioning them in and out of the project, including when the workload is even or incremental. A second thing you could do is see to have some key resources dedicated in the phase you require them, suspending their standard work or some non-core activities. Now, in terms of evaluating the effort component, one point is given if up to 10% of the time is needed for the workload. Two points if 10% to 20% of the time is needed for the workload. Three points if 20% to 40% of the time is needed to the workload. And four points if the time needed for the workload is 40% or above. Now, with regards to the dice score, once you evaluate your team based on each of these four components, then you place the respective numbers within the dice equation that you have in front of you. If your score is between 7 to 14, your project's health is in the win range. This means that in point in time, your project can be executed successfully. A score from 14 to 17 means your project health is in the worry range. That implies that at this point in time, you need to look at each factor to see which one needs to be improved because your project is in trouble. 
there is a chance that it will not succeed. And lastly, a score from 17 to 28 means that your project health is in the wool range. This implies that at this point in time, your project is set out to fail. It is important that you look at each factor to see which one needs to be improved to avoid this failure from happening. Now, since this method is simply telling you how your project looks at a given time when factors are measured, it is considered a statistic number. Therefore, it should be calculated multiple times during the execution of your project to see if anything changed in your project's dynamics. We hope that you found this learning valuable to you. For more learnings, go to our website and please subscribe. Thank you.